Welcome back to Issues of Faith. We are talking with Jenna Lee Nardella, founder of Blood Water Mission, also author of a new book, 1,000 Wells, How an Audacious Goal Taught Me to Love the World, there it is, instead of save it. And as, as we went to break, in, in the foreword, I read something that struck me. Um, it was written by Donald Miller, and he said he went to your birthday party, again, very young, I think it was 25th mm -hmm. birthday party. And he, he saw you, and he, he thought, what would happen, God forbid, if you, were, if you walked outside and got hit by a bus, if you were no longer here? And he said there would be thousands of people who wouldn't have water, who would die, whose lives would be altered in a bad way. Mm. And then he turned it around and said, so what would happen if, if he walked outside? And, and, and then you think about it in the bigger picture, what would happen if I were no longer here? And it makes us all think about those projects that might not get finished if somehow we weren't here. Mm -hmm. And we may not all be called to Africa, mm -hmm. but we should all be called to something. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you feel that? Yeah, absolutely. And I think sometimes people want to write themselves off because they're not being a Mother Teresa or going and doing something in Africa. And I think it's important to kind of level that playing field and to remember that every single person has an important thing to bring to the world and that they each person has a calling, a vocation um, that they ought to explore and, and to be able to understand that there are, there are things that we can do in our lifetime that can be audacious, that can actually be remarkable. Um, but to, to realize that it starts today and it starts with where your feet are today and what you're passionate about now and how you can step forward into that and not have to sit around and just think, oh, well, I'm not doing anything in Africa, so my life isn't as remarkable because it is. Start something. Yeah. Do something begin a project and it doesn't have to be Africa it can be here and you can make a difference and so if a 21 year old came to you and said I'm gonna build a thousand wells in Africa or China mm -hmm. or something if a 21 year old came to you with that kind of a huge goal what would you say I would commend the vision and then I would say go find some mentors and learn from them and I would say go and make sure that you spend time in those communities that you're desiring to serve to make sure that your vision is aligned with theirs as well and, and look for opportunities for partnership. And, and don't expect that your dream is gonna be fulfilled tomorrow, but that it might be something that you work on every day for the rest of your life, and that that's, that's life worth living. What was the closest point that you came to, to thinking this wasn't gonna happen? Either having to walk away from it or mm -hmm. just thinking this will just never happen? Yeah. Was, was there one point that you were closest? Yeah, I think it was, um, it was actually a few years into our work and we'd been able to do a, a really amazing water project in the, the desert of Kenya. And um, we helped the community build rainwater catchment tanks, these huge tanks to be able to capture the rain so they could use the water for months on end. And so it was over a year long project. We'd raised a ton of money in the US. So many people contributed toward it and the community themselves did all of the hard work. And what ended up happening was that it f was followed by by a season of drought and so we just sat and watched these rain tanks sit there empty for over a year with this question of but I thought we did it right I thought this is exactly what we were supposed to do and I think um, what was the hardest to realize was we could do all these things but we can't bring the rain and so what do you do when that happens and that was about the time that I wanted to just give it up completely because I thought I did everything I was supposed to do and now this is what the result is and it becomes so hard to be able to stay with it when it feels like a lost cause. And it was all consuming for you and you had the support of your parents Yeah. but at some point you write in here your dad says um, I, don't let this be the only thing. Mm -hmm. Is that right? When yeah, that conversation he, came up, what, what were you thinking that was, was about? He was reminding me that if this falls apart, I can definitely come home and there's, <laughs> there's a bed for me at home. And, um, and I think at the time it was, it was comforting to know that. Um, but I really, I, I really didn't want to fail, and I really wanted to, to stick with it. I was afraid of failure, and I had faced so many reasons, so many empty mailboxes when I just opened the mailbox and hoped for letters of checks or some kind of support.
support, um, but continued in it anyway. But I think really what's important to know is that though I'm sitting here today, the story of A Thousand Wells is hundreds of thousands of people who have been a part of this community with me. Whether Nashville's been huge. We've had so much support come out of churches and um, and all, I mean, the, the music industry, so many artists that have supported us in what we're doing. And then hundreds of thousands of people across the U.S. that have raised money for us and done different um, activities from lemonade stands to giving up their birthdays one dollar at a time. And then the thousands of people in Africa who have really done the hard work of building and um, rebuilding their communities. And so where do you go from here? Um, you know, you've have you built a thousand wells? We sure have. <laughs> okay, so you've done that. Yes. Good for you. So where do you go from here? Yeah, so what we've found is over the last 10 years, we've been able to provide clean water for more than a million people. And um, we don't want to stop there. And so we'd love to be able to provide support for the next million. And I think that the way that we're doing it is maybe a little bit different than the, than the beginning. And it's making sure that we're really equipping these African organizations to be the heroes. And so we're spending a lot more time on building them up in their communities and allowing them to be there for the long haul and um, but yeah we have we have so much work at hand we're working in five different countries right now with vision for the ability to do more HIV support for communities that are very vulnerable in that health area and um, water sanitation hygiene wells rain tanks biosand filters um, sanitation and hygiene trainings but basically it's these communities that come together and they are the ones that are being the change and we get to provide the the financial support as they go along. There is, with Africa, this notion of one step forward, um, two steps back sometimes. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you, you feel really good about something that you've accomplished, and then whether it's a drought or a conflict, there are steps back that just can really set you back. Absolutely. And so you've, you've been through this. Are you, are you optimistic, more optimistic, less optimistic? Is it a different kind of optimism? I mean, what? What, what do you think about where Africa is headed? Yeah, I think it's less about optimism and more about hope. Optimism feels empty when you try to see that rain tank and have it filled with water or hope for that or expect that. But the hope is being able to see beyond that and, and being able to commit and know that if you stay with it and that if the people are with each other in it, that there's something beautiful that can come out of it. I think it's more about understanding that we're invited to a great story and to get to participate in it, um, but that true hope is always hard. And so you have to have the muscle and the expectation for a lot of disappointment along the way. And in Kenya, I say this in the book, but in Kenya they say pole pole or slowly by slowly. And in Zambia they say brick by brick, panono panono. And so it's that th their expectation is that it's going to be difficult, that there is going to be a three steps forward, two steps back. And ebb and flow and I think in some ways I've learned a lot that that's something that's still true just about human progress in general and we just think that's not true in America because everything's so instantly gratifying but there are things that are not happening because we're doing it so quickly but redemption is not fast it is slow and it is something that I think if we um, if we don't bulldoze through things and actually if we can take care of one at a time and do it in a way where we're part of a community and that we're prayerful and and hopeful, um, I think that that's a, a much better way to live than to just um, kind of bulldoze through and think that we're making change that probably wouldn't be as lasting. And do you think we, we only have two minutes left, but we Westerners, American churches, do we, do we get it? I mean, we, we have to alter our expectations. Yeah. Are we are we doing that or are we still have a long way I to go? I think we have a long way to go. I have a long way to go because you know, we want to see change happen immediately. And and does a church really want to partner with one community or one organization for seven years? Because that's about how long it takes to see real transformation happen in one particular place. If you think about your own your own development, it takes years. And so I don't know, do we as a church have what it takes to stay with it when it gets hard? Or when all these other ideas or great causes come in front of us, we want to jump to the next thing. But can we stay with it and see what happens? over time when we've been there in the hard times and in the celebrations. I think that's a great challenge for the church today. And it's an important one. Absolutely. And the church can grow, but we also don't want to have those empty promises. Yeah. So they need to stick with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, a great book. 
So we have 45 seconds left. Tell us where it's going to be. You're, you're about to begin a big tour, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm hitting the southeast and the northwest. Um, but yeah, 1000 Wells, we're having a big event with Salon 615 on Monday um, with the Nashville Public Library. So looking forward to that. And Parnassus Books, and you'll be able to get it everywhere. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you. Jenna Lee Nardella, founder of Bloodwater Mission. And also, there's the book, 1000 Wells, How an Audacious Goal Taught Me to Love the World Instead of Save It. Thanks for watching Issues of Faith. Have a great day, everybody.